Welcome back. In this tutorial, let's look at uh, more about constructors. Um, what is a constructor? Uh, how does constructor work in case of inherited classes? And also a little bit about uh, copy constructors. Let's get started. Let's now create a small uh, class. I'll just call it student and let's try and create an instance of this class and test it let's see what happens so I'm creating a test I'd say public void create student now I can create an instance of this student class so student is equal to new student when I see this method actually it's invoking a method on the student object that's basically the constructor of the student object that's invoked but when I look at the student class there isn't anything defined in here that's basically what we call a default constructor what Java offers when you create a class is something called a default constructor so that default constructor basically doesn't do anything so it you are able to create an instance of the class by default it's almost like saying student empty so I'm creating a constructor here uh, one important thing about a constructor is it has the same name its method has the same name as that of a class uh, so uh, it's student here and it's students here with a capital S that's basically the same type also uh, and a constructor can also be public, uh, private. Uh, there are reasons why you'd want a private constructor. Let's discuss them later. But uh, usually, all constructors are public. So I would create a public student. So this is basically something similar to a default constructor. So this is what is a default constructor. Uh, you can actually, let's say I have a student with a name. So in name, then I can actually pass, sorry it should be string name okay so it is this uh, now I can create as this basically expects a name as an argument now I can go ahead and create a student with passing in the name of the student so should name Ricky for example so now I can say I can also expose let's say I, I won't want a variable to be public so I'll make it private and create a constructor for it generate data so private and create setters for it that so now I'm creating a setter for this particular uh, variable also let me just format it a bit and also move the methods constructor should be the first method Um, yeah. now I can create this and I can also assert equals rookie string dot get name sorry I have created a setter I will want to create a getter basically want to return this back want to call that method If you look at this right now, let's try and run this method right now. Okay, that's good. So it succeeds. Uh, if you look at this constructor in detail, it basically is what we call a one argument constructor. It basically accepts a uh, argument as name and it sets the value to the local member variable name so uh, you'd see a lot of constructors of this kind as you go on I mean th this is one argument constructor you can have a two argument multiple argument constructors now that's one part about constructors let's now look at uh, how constructors behave 
when you have a subclass superclass kind of stuff so let's get to that kind of stuff now quickly uh, i'll create a class i'll call this superclass and i'll create another class called subclass uh, i would want the subclass to extend superclass extends superclass and i would also create a small test to be able to void test something it doesn't really matter now okay i would create a subclass subclass is equal to new subclass so what we have done right now is to be able to create a subclass with super class with a capital c okay let's try and run this this basically doesn't do anything actually what happens inside is there's a constructor a default constructor which the subclass offers and the default constructor which super class offers although them would have been invoked by this let's see int i'll create a variable here like i'll create a int a here i'll create a for strings always string b so now uh, let's create a superclass constructor which accepts string name let's call this name this dot name is equal to name what you would see is as soon as i create something in the super class the sub class as soon as a constructor is created with a particular uh, argument type so i have a one argument constructor with accepting a parameter string this this is a compilation error on the sub class this is because if you have a constructor defined in this super class you have to extend it in the sub class so now i'll go ahead and extend it in the sub class and i would probably actually here uh, call the super class constructor itself and say su super and name this basically actually is a invocation of the super class constructor with the parameter name so that's basically what happens this is also called constructor chaining because now i call the subclass constructor like when i create the subclass constructor what happens is i have to pass in the name that's first thing so subclass with name as ram so uh, as soon as i pass in the name this calls this superclass constructor and the name is set this is basically what is called constructor chaining so i can now actually assert equals ideally this should not be private so i just say ideally this should be private and should be accessed through a setter so i'll say public get name return this dot name and now i can go ahead and say assert equals ramu comma subclass dot get me so let's see if this works okay that's good this is called constructor chaining and if we want actually to add a few more uh, variables to the constructor we can do that too let's say i have here instead of name let's say this is type for example i can create a subclass constructor accepting string name comma string type and then call super of name and then say this dot type is equal to type so this would create a subclass constructor with two arguments which passes the responsibility of assigning the name to a superclass constructor and then sets the type on itself this is called uh, constructor chaining um, also the other kind of constructor which 
you usually look at is what is called a copy constructor. Let's quickly uh, write a class which enables us to test that. What you see on the screen right now is a very simple class. There's a student who has two member variables name and marks. I have a two uh, like a constructor with two arguments name and marks and it basically sets the name and marks and I have the getters for that particular thing. So now what is a copy constructor? A copy constructor is something which enables us to copy the object itself. So a copy constructor would have the same class received as an argument. So student, student. So now in a copy constructor, this is how it would be student.name and student.marks. Let's go ahead and now use the copy constructor here. So student. student is equal to new student of Ramu comma 50. So that creates a student object. Now let's now create a student using the copy constructor. Student 2. I would want to copy everything from student. So I would say student of student. So that basically creates the student 2. Let's also check uh, the values inside student two. Student two dot get name You can check the marks as well. I, I'll keep it simple and just check the name. Okay, that's perfect. So basically, a copy constructor enables us to copy. Uh, sum or all of the values inside a particular object to itself. So you are creating a new instance of that particular object. The patterns like builder patterns where this might be used. We are creating more videos as we speak and if you want to stay updated don't forget to click the subscribe button. If you like this video please give us a thumbs up and feel free to share this video. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye.